Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to You're Right Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, and welcome to Season 19. The album that we're starting to talk about today is called Sea of Light. And man, you know, uh, it's really nice to see that the lineup has stayed the same. This band is, you know, kind of found an anchor in how they're going to proceed here for this album. And they're getting comfort- more and more comfortable with each other. They're learning stuff individually and together on tour. And they all bring that back to the writing sessions. And uh, the band just gets better and better. So uh, just to give you a quick recap on who the players are on guitar, as always, we have Mick Box on drums. We have Lee Kerslake on bass. We have Trevor Boulder on keys, Phil Lanzen, and on vocals, Bernie Shaw, just like the last album. So I cannot wait to get into this and hear what this music is all about. But we have another returning champion to the band. The artwork for this album was done by Roger Dean. And Roger Dean is very well known for his album covers, such as Demons and Wizards and The Magician's Birthday, you know, uh, just replicated beautifully with uh, some alternate type of artwork for both the 50th anniversary box set as well as the Everyday Rocks box set. As you saw, if you watched my unboxing video, or if you bought it yourself or saw, you know, another video or anything like that, uh, very well done. But I was curious as to who had done it because looking at the album cover, it's kind of back to that, you know, fantasy mystical land. There's just something about this that seemed really familiar. So I looked in the book to see who is the artist. And sure enough, it was Roger Dean. Now, I have to say, this is a beautiful picture that fares very well with the title. Some of them, I haven't really understood the connection to the album. Sometimes it's just like a really cool picture coupled with a really cool album. Uh, But this one I absolutely love. I love the concept of it. It's definitely a place I would love to visit if it existed. I'm guessing by the levitating rocks that it doesn't, at least not on this planet. Uh, And the giant bonsai trees growing out of the rocks also, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe that does happen here, but certainly not of levitating rocks. So, uh, yeah, it's just a very beautiful album cover. Really nice. Uh, you know, green, I'm guessing it's going to be like a green phosphorus or something or a moss that's covering the rocks. But the the background, everything just like really nice pastel colors. It looks like it's kind of uh, night is coming. There's some clouds off in the distance. But uh, I, I just love it. I think it's a very gorgeous cover. I love the uh, font that was used for the band logo Uriah Heap on this one. It's kind of pieces of stone that are put together. Uh, but the font itself, the shape of the letters is a very, very well done. Um, sea of Light is then wedged in there underneath below the uh, falling tails of some of the letters. But it's a very, very cool cover. I really dig it. I think Roger Dean did a great job on this one. And it's, you know, it's nice to see his artwork back on the albums again. I, I'm always really iffy on album covers. To me, you know, I understand the importance of them. And since I don't have you know, 12 inch vinyls for everything anymore, the artwork has meant less and less to me on albums I get because either I get them digitally or if I do get them on CD, you know, they're pretty small. You're missing a lot of the detail. I'm sure I'm missing some detail on this one just because of the size of it. But uh, certainly uh, I can appreciate this one on a lot of levels, especially the layers of clouds in the distance. That's really cool. Um, the floating rocks. I mean, the whole thing's just done so well. And so it makes me uh, very excited to hear the album. If I was not a Uriah Heap fan, or if I did not realize by a quick look at the font, the uh, logo that this was a Uriah Heap album, I honestly think I would have been drawn in by the cover anyway. Like if I was just walking around in a record shop and happened to see it, or if I was perusing online and happened to see it, I think I would have stopped and looked at it and checked out what it was and, and all that kind of thing. So I think as artwork, that's the job of artwork. And I think that it would have done its job very well, like I said, had I not already known that it was Uriah Heap and that it was Roger Dean that did it. So uh, great work on that. So we're going to get into our first song. It is called Against the Odds. And, you know, this is another one of those titles that really kind of evokes a a lot of thoughts in me. You know, I think about times that, you know, maybe uh, 
not contests, but like competitions that I've entered or, you know, different things like that, whether it be, you know, different things when I was a kid or, you know, songwriting contests or things like that. And I, and I think about how much is against you. You know, if, if there's 20 people in it, you only have a one in 20 chance of, of being the best. And, you know, the more people that enter, obviously those chances go smaller and smaller, but it really, you know, you think about it and you're always fighting against the odds because there's more than one thing almost all the time that you're trying to get past or conquer or, you know, survive or whatever it is. So I feel like a lot of our lives is spent against the odds. So I'll very be very curious to see how that title fits into the song. Let's get right into it. Let's kick off season 19 with a bang. This song is about six minutes and 13 seconds, I believe, according to my player. And let's find out how it sounds. Here it is. Against the Odds by Uriah Heep, season 19, Sea of Light. What a great way to start off an album, you know, really intriguing sounds, something that draws you in. It's got that element of mystery, makes you wonder where it's going. That bell cutting through nice and crisp, just breaking the, you know, that that tension of the pad sound that we're hearing. Very cool. Is that kick-ass or what? Wasting no time stating that this is a rock album. Mick's got his real heavy sound back. He's got a lot of bottom end in that guitar. Then we've got the second guitar, the solo guitar coming in and just playing some blistering stuff. Great beat, real solid. Can't really hear what Phil and Trevor are doing too much at the moment, but I'm sure that will become clear as time goes on. But so far, this is just uh, making a statement. Okay, so I'm hearing a rhythm guitar and I'm hearing a second guitar. I think Trevor's following the rhythm. And then, of course, you know, we've got a pretty straight but very solid drum beat from Lee. Love the way his drums sound on this so far. Uh, We've got Phil cutting through with some organ in there, which sounds really good. It's It's a really nice balance. I could use maybe a touch more organ in the mix, but this is obviously very guitar driven and nice and heavy. And then we got some great work from Bernie singing over the top of all of it. Uh, Sounds really good. Oh man, I love what Phil is playing in the background of all of this. That is such a great addition. And check it out if he continues to do it as we go along in this verse. What a great riff. I love how it moves along. It's just something that, you know, you kind of have to tap your foot to or move in whatever way that you like to move. But it's definitely something that one makes you physically active, you know, and very powerful, really good tempo. 
and the vocals are, are fantastic. Right off the bat, they're showing the signature stuff. They're showing the transitions. They're showing the uh, backing vocals. They're showing what great songwriters and performers they are. And this is just a great start to a new album. And we're not even two minutes in yet. love this part. I love the backing vocals being the way they are. But have you are you hearing what Trevor Boulder is doing on bass? He is on fire on this song. He's all over the place, just really playing his heart out. I love when he gets like this. That is how you open an album, ladies and gentlemen, with just killer riffs, a good beat, nice forward motion, a groove and bass, strong vocals, killer keyboards, and an amazing on-fire guitar solo. In the beginning of that, I felt like he was going to rip the strings right off of his guitar. It really just felt like he was just digging in so hard. And I love that part where the keyboards joined him in in the last section of the solo there sounded really good. Um, this This is a killer tune. I love where they choose to put the backing vocals in this song. It's very powerful, but not over the top. Uh, There's, I I kind of am glad that there's no high harmony as of yet here, because I think that would be maybe just crossing the line or at least pushing it to the edge. Uh, If they do it down the road in the song, maybe after a couple chorus repeats, then that wouldn't be so bad to have that as a change. We'll see where that goes, but I absolutely love that. And thinking in terms of the verse, you know, uh, the rhythm guitar is pretty straightforward. And so it's nice to have the keyboards playing those different tones to give us a little bit of melody while keeping that rhythm going. It's very, very well done. I love the way it's blended in there. The organ can be heard, but it doesn't overcut the vocals, which, you know, the higher up on the organ, you start getting into those common, more common vocal frequencies and they can start to compete with each other. But here, everything's got its space. It sounds really good. Okay, I just got to cut in and say that I absolutely love that part. I love the note progression that they're using on it. I love the backing vocals on it. I think it's absolutely flawless. It's a real nice. It's almost like, you know, when you when you're eating a candy bar and then you find there's just like a little bit of marshmallow in there or, you know, some kind of surprise and it just delights you. That's what this just did for me. And and it did the first time it passed. I uh, really love that part. It's very, very interesting to listen to. And let's see where it goes from there.
You know, it's interesting, the last album and so far on this album, we're hearing a lot more ride cymbal coming from Lee. And it's pretty nice, especially on a song like this. I love that extra accent that he's putting on the snare. Really just helps the song groove a little bit more. But it's very powerful. You know, if he was doing it as sort of a ghost note, um, which which is a much lighter hit, you know, you you hear it just like a little pop or maybe a slight drag on the on the head. But this uh, is, is great because it really helps the song move and, and especially underneath what Mick was playing. Um, and then we, we, again, just morph so smoothly back into the verse or the chorus. Wow, what a great song. I mean, just from beginning to end, um, I would have thought maybe we would see a return of the opening somewhere in there, even layered over top of what we were hearing or or maybe slightly underneath it. But that didn't happen. But you know what? I'm okay with it because the song took off in some great directions, kept my interest, just gripped me the whole time. And even it was fading out, I, I felt myself moving like towards my monitor because I wanted to follow it and see where it went. But, uh, you know, you get what you get. And uh, it was a great song. I'm, I'm so thrilled already right off the bat with this album. What a way to kick off a season, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the podcast. We will see you guys on the next show for another song from Sea of Light. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days. <laughs>